A new rule in honor of the Academy Awards show this Sunday. Tonight, I would like to commemorate the moment 50 years ago that transformed the Oscar telecast into what it is today. A four-hour lecture on how bad most people have it by the people who have it the best. <laughs> But 50 years ago, an activist for Native American causes named Sasheen Littlefeather was the first person in Oscar history to walk on that stage and say, I know this award is for acting, but I'm going to bore you with my politics anyway. <laughs> you see, 1973 was the year Marlon Brando won Best Actor for The Godfather. And <laughs> a little late, but... <laughs> and instead of accepting the award himself, he sent Ms. Littlefeather on stage in his place to voice what was truly and is an important cause. Now, for you young people watching, Marlon Brando was an actor. <laughs> Native Americans were the first people here. <laughs> And The Godfather was a long TikTok featuring the... <laughs> featuring the horse head in the bed challenge. <laughs> now, a little context. Brando had just made one of the all-time great comebacks by playing The Godfather, and anyone else would have eagerly shown up to the ceremony for their victory lap. But Brando chose to stay home for two reasons. To draw attention to Native American rights, and because, like this year's Oscar favorite, the whale, he was stuck in his chair. <laughs> <Good kid. laughs> but it is how Ms. Littlefeather was greeted by the Hollywood crowd that night that interests me. And the picture of liberal Hollywood on that night may surprise you. Here's how the New York Times described it in Sasheen Littlefeather's obituary from last October. At the podium, she endured a chorus of boos, drawing jeers on stage. She said that some audience members did the tomahawk chop. A producer for the Oscars told her that she would be arrested if her comments lasted more than 60 seconds. The actor John Wayne was so unsettled that a show producer said security guards had to restrain him so that he would not storm the stage. This was back when storming the stage was not allowed. <laughs> <laughs> the obituary also said that Littlefeather recalled that while she was giving the speech, she had focused in on the mouths and jaws that were dropping open in the audience, and there were quite a few. Now, come on. If Sasheen Littlefeather made that same speech at this year's Oscars, there'd be cheers, and there would be no shocked looks on faces, and that is because of progress. <laughs> and also Botox. But let's talk about the progress part, because people today don't seem to have a realistic view of how progress works. For example, do you know who Time Magazine's Man of the Year was in that year of 1973? Me neither, because who cares? The point is, Time Magazine was still calling their award the Man of the Year. Time Magazine, another pillar of liberal enlightenment like the Oscars, but it only changed the name to Person of the Year in 1999. In the Bible, no one. No one, not God, not Jesus, even considers the possibility that slavery is wrong. There are lots of rules about it, but no one ever says, hey, maybe we just shouldn't do it at all. <laughs> what? Not at all? Who would schlep those giant rocks? <laughs> we need to make that awesome religious shrine we're making. That's where people were, all people. And looking back, we always wish our forebearers would have come to progress sooner. Ronald Reagan was very late on doing something about AIDS. But the liberals aren't on time either. Obama was late on gay marriage. JFK was late on civil rights. Bill Clinton was late on not having the interns blow you. <laughs> I 
I don't know if everything happens everywhere all at once. <laughs> But I do know that everyone is late on everything, because that's what it is to be human. Biden is currently, as we speak, late on pot. <laughs> and it's gonna look bad in the future. The difference is the next Democrat will legalize pot. Yeah. The liberals are late, like all people are, but they do tend to keep going until we get there. I'm constantly amazed when I rewatch movies from only a decade or so ago, and they were made in a way that today would get you burned at the Twitter stake. <laughs> it's complicated. From 2009, to name just one of many I could choose, was made by a who's who of the most blue-ribbon certified Hollywood liberals, woke-approved and Democratic Party contributing from the stars to the producers to the director, but it apparently occurred to none of them to have any kind of minority in the cast. You would need a divining rod to find a person of color within 500 feet of this movie set. <laughs> But if they made it today, they'd do better. When it comes to social justice, liberals are still the tip of the spear, but even the spear comes up short a lot. They were dicks to an Indian in 1973. <laughs> and they were still blind to diversity in 2009. But along the way, Hollywood also moved the country forward by opening people's eyes to racism and anti-Semitism, to AIDS and interracial couples and disabilities and environmental issues and addiction and LGBT rights and, yes, the plight of the American Indian. So thank you, Hollywood. <laughs> Have fun at the Oscars.